because I'm bad at math and, and clocks. Mm -hmm. uh, at 45 minutes in, can you let me know so we can switch to a different format? 45 minutes on the clock. Thank you. Thank you. Start talking. <laughs> I hired in television. Go ahead. Ah! Ah! We're live. Go. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to the uh, polyamory and non-monogamy discussion panel. This is my first time ever running a discussion panel, so if you uh, hate it and have feedback, let me know afterwards. If you love it and have feedback, let me know afterwards. I want to get better, because I'd like to bring this back next year. Um, my name is Joy Pfeiffer. Uh, I live in San Francisco with my... Oh, Gordon's not here yet, because he this starts at seven, but yeah, I have the same thing going on. For you. Okay. Here, yeah. All right, I'm right here. That's at seven. Oh, oh you're right <laughs> here. Never mind. Also, Would I'm you blind. like some seltzer? <laughs> no, yeah, thank you. You're the best. Um, I live in San Francisco with uh, my husband and nesting partner Gordon and our four cats. Uh, I also have a long distance partner of six years. Um, I have been actively non monogamous in some form for about 12 years. I've probably been my whole life. I used to wonder why I couldn't marry every Disney prince when I was growing up. <laughs> uh, uh, I had the idea for this panel after last year's Joko Cruise because I talked to a few people at and after the mixers who were like, I want to learn more and it's hard to learn from people or ask questions when everyone's like doing the mingling and drinking thing. Um, so this panel is for anyone who's interested in learning about polyamory and other forms of non-monogamy. It's okay if you don't identify in any of those ways. Maybe you just have friends or family members and you want to understand better. Maybe you're curious. Uh, maybe you just like learning new things. We're all nerds. We like learning new things even if they're not our thing. Uh, no matter what, everyone is welcome. No questions are off limits or, or taboo. We just, uh, I, I ask that everyone hold respect because everyone has different definitions and ideas. Uh, when it comes to this type of stuff in relationships. Uh, so you may hear things that are like totally against anything you've ever heard before. Leave space for that, uh, please. Um, and now I will let my other panelists briefly introduce themselves and then we'll get started. You're next. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, a microphone. Cool, thanks. Oh yeah, I'm I'm not gonna use a microphone. I promise I will talk loud. Microphones make me extremely anxious. So okay. if you need me to speak up at any point, just raise your hand and let me know. Hi, I'm Rachel. Um, I'm either <laughs> I'm either Tikva or Tikva eighty two on the various socials. Um, I am less recognizable without my charismatic megafauna. Aww. Usually I have a poodle with me. This is apparently not real life and I don't. Um, but yeah, um, I have been polyamorous literally my entire adult life and I just turned 50. Um, and, uh, and it kind of happened by accident. Um, I am somebody who occasionally takes things kind of literally and so when I went off to college I said to my high school boyfriend, and it did not occur to me that this phrase had any other meaning, I said, I think we should see other people. <laughs> <laughs> because... Instead <laughs> of, in addition to... That's exactly what I meant. I was like, I love you and I don't want to break up, but also I'm going to be 500 miles away, so we should do this thing, right? You know, and like... Um, and there are apparently other phrases that I use differently than other people, like, like we need to talk. Apparently we need to talk is very loaded. <laughs> I just mean it as we need to talk. Um, also, then I fell in love with more than one person. That is literally like how it happened, and I did all the stupid human tricks from then on in, and then like eventually, now, fast forward, I have lived for the past, what the hell year are we in? S almost 17 years with, um, with my family. Uh, we are... Our current relationship structure, I think, is either N-shaped or Z-shaped, depending on how you want to. Um, plus, two of the people in my house had a baby, so there's this little island over here. Um, and uh, we have we um, have sort of an extended family with our with our our pod of other partners, and also several of us have partners outside of there. So I also have the world's most amazing girlfriend. Sorry, everybody else's girlfriend. Um, <laughs> who is who does not live. 
Uh, but we have been living together as a family, the, the now five, because there's a baby, I can't count, um, have been living together, um, except for the baby, for uh, 17 years, and uh, we, it's pretty great. Um, and now I work for a city that that would theoretically recognize us if we wanted to register with them, so that is also pretty great. Uh, hello, my name is Lee Sharp. Uh, on basically anything ever, I am Lee Sharp, because that's my name. Um, uh, I have uh, been with one of my partners for uh, 14 years now, I think. Yeah, 13 years. 13 years now. And uh, thank you for doing math faster than me. And um, uh, that is... Uh, uh, you know, we were monogamous most of that time. Uh, a little over three years ago, uh, we became uh, poly. Um, that was definitely a uh, uh, a transition, um, and and brought a lot with its own challenges. And um, then I uh, started dating uh, my other partner, who I've been with about two and a half years or so now. And then my first partner uh, was like, oh, actually, they're awesome. And then they were like, whoa, you're awesome, too. Maybe we should also date. Uh, so that, that happened. Uh, and uh, uh, I was kind of terrified by that, to be honest. But uh, it, it has worked out well. And, and now all three of us live together. And it's going really well. So, yeah. Hey, folks. I'm Zach Nelson. Um, I'm uh, one of our... Midwest contingent. I've uh, got kind of a shorter journey with Polly than some. Uh, uh, you can thank the boat for my <laughs> discovery. Same. Yeah. I actually uh, was attracted to someone on board and then found out that they were polyamorous and I didn't really know what that meant. I knew that they had someone that they were going to dinner with and there was some kind of situation happening there and they were very kind and sat me down and answered all of my rather invasive questions and uh, then I stepped away from that for about three years and I thought about it and I dated other people and I continued to go to boat and talk to people over time and came to the conclusion that that was a, that the idea of letting relationships develop into what they are without the expectations of society is something that I vibe with pretty hard. Um, these days I am one of the many folks who uh, are dealing with the joys and challenges of a long distance relationship with someone that I love. Uh, we've been dating for about a year. Um, I'm currently only dating one person, open to other people, but uh, let me tell you, uh, the Midwest is not Seattle. So, uh, we'll be talking about how polyamory can both enhance and limit things uh, when I get the chance, but I look forward to hearing what my fellow panelists and all of you have to talk about. this a try. That's not too bad. Okay. Um, so my first question, I actually think we all already asked, so, so I will switch to the next one um, to get us started, which is uh, kind of something Zach already touched on. What has been your biggest struggle since you started uh, doing the non-monogamy thing? If anyone wants to start out, you can, or I can I can go what y'all think. Cool. Um, I think for me, uh, I was I was what's known as solo poly for a very long time, which is basically where like you're kind of your own primary partner. You date other people, but there's like you don't like really some people like they don't like to live with anyone. Like I wasn't living with a partner, and so I was very into like the independence thing, and then I was like I really want to do the like core, like have a relationship combined financials with someone. How the hell do I find somebody who's gonna like be cool with all the things about me 
who's not already married to somebody else, because that was my problem. I, I, date, I, I have dated so many already married men, which is great. I, I'm still, I'm currently dating an already married man who I've been dating for six years, but like, we're not allowed to marry more than one person. It's yes. stupid. Yet. Yet, yet, yet. Uh, so that was a big struggle for me, but uh, for, you know, I just kept putting myself out there. Unfortunately, I met a man who was looking for exactly. Hey! Oh my God! Where are you? <laughs> it is. It's a, sit We're not down. having that discussion. I love okay. you. Sit down. Okay. <laughs> uh, you two have that relationship. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, um, and now I find myself on the opposite end where. I intimidate a lot of people who like they want someone that they can get married to eventually and I'm like well I'm sorry but I can't give you that and also I am never gonna be one of those people who can live with multiple partners I barely tolerate him <laughs> he's great I just don't like living with other people yeah. you're great but I couldn't handle another person in the house Relatable. anyway I will pass it on How about a cat? so I can't just there we go I can't decide if my biggest obstacle, if my biggest problem has been me oh. or other people. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, other, like society, other people? Yeah, other yeah, people and, yeah, like, like society, other people, right? Because, like, there's, the, you know, there's some, I really, like, I, I <laughs> there's a lot of anxiety around being out to my family for example. And there has been anxiety about being out to partner's family sometimes, although there is none of that right now because my, all of I'm out to all my partner's families at this time. But um, I think really the issue is, the number one issue is me um, because I get in my own way. And while, so it turns out like all the shit you have to, you're supposed to have together for a monogamous relationship, you need to have really together for many relationships. <laughs> um, and also, I am not a terribly secure person, right? I'm in the middle of reading this book that came out recently, Polysecure, and I'm like, oh, really? I'm in this picture, and I don't like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that book will hurt your feelings a lot. Yeah, so. right. Like, I'm on chapter two, and I'm like, look. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, that is a thing. Like, I, and this is an explanation, not an excuse. I am in charge of, my, of what I do in my own life with my, uh, with my own shit, right? But, like, I have a trauma history, and... I and I tend to and I tend to be a lot. It is how I am. I'm not apologizing for it. But like, yeah, it's a good thing to spread that around a little bit among the <laughs> But what it does mean is that like the the terrible thing in the back of my lizard brain that tells me this person doesn't really want to be with me takes a long time to shut up. And it can be really hard to believe that not that you know, that that um and also to not sabotage myself. And that is also sometimes an issue, like self-sabotage is a legit an issue. And thank God I have an awesome therapist who is totally cool with the polyamory thing and makes a world of difference. And also I have partners and chosen family who support me and also call me on my shit. <laughs> and so I am a one of the great things actually for me about polyamory is that while I can make it on my own. I have people in my life with whom I am so much healthier. And I get, and though in so many different ways, right? Like, there have been things that I have been able to get through because of very specific people in my life. That's not what they're there for. It's just a really cool benefit of being with people who I otherwise love and are awesome. Like, I am shit at letting people take care of me first person I ever let take care of me on the regular outside of outside of a BDSM scene is sitting right there. I mean, other than like, you know, when I was a kid, my parents took care of me. Like that kind of, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of like head games I didn't know I engaged in where I, my other partner that I live with was just like, would just sort of look at me and go, what is this? Like, what is that? What is the objective here? And I'd have to sit down and look at it. And I, have these different perspectives in my life. It's not these people's job to psychoanalyze me. It's just that they care about me and want me to be a happy, healthy person. And I want to be the best person I can be, and I'm a better person when I'm with them.
Yeah, um, the, there's a lot of different challenges uh, to think through. I think certainly one of the biggest ones, especially early, is, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, for one, like as I said, my partner and I were initially monogamous and getting through that and having that conversation of, you know, uh, this is something that I want to change in our relationship and trying to do that and reassure them and make them feel like uh, this is not you know, this is not saying you're not enough. This is not saying you're, you don't, you, I don't want you, right? Like this is, this is a, this is a yes and, sort of to, to use an improv bit, um, you know, it, it is a, I, I want this in my, I want you in my life and there are other things that I, and other relationships that I want to. Um, I think too, another thing there is, you know, uh, Communication is is, a, is, a, is always a big challenge. I think that's true even, uh, you know, what, what, with partners you've had for, for a long time. It certainly gets better over time, especially with any given partner, but there's a lot of challenges related, you know, people come in with different expectations about all sorts of things in relationships, about how much you're gonna talk about, especially in poly. It's like, it's like exponential almost growth in terms of uh, the complication. Both because there's important things like sexual health and you know other other conversations like that that you need to have, but also not even just have, but sort of go at what point is this enough to like uh, enough of a flag that or enough of a potential area of disagreement that I feel like we should have a conversation about it, uh, and and you know sometimes you'll have situations where both people feel like it's not a significant enough thing to have a conversation about. And then it becomes, and then later it, it, the rubber hits the road, and it actually was one. And um, you know, those are those are uh, challenging situations to work through. And uh, you know, also people have very different styles of conflict resolution. Some people are very conflict avoidant. Some people are very direct and confrontational. Uh, and you know uh, that can lead to and, and people have a variety of traumas and there's different attach you know anxious attachment versus avoidant attachment and the, those kinds of things that can lead to uh, not great communication uh, sometimes so it's you know navigating that is always for me a big a big challenge I mean I, I'm getting better at it for sure but <laughs> Folks, we love you. We appreciate you. Uh, thanks, thanks for being here. Uh, I think probably my biggest challenge uh, has just been getting off the script that was handed to me. Um, uh, hey, uh, on this boat, like I, I was talking to a couple people at the same time, literally in the same room, and I checked in with both of them, making sure that they were okay with this, which is of course the most important thing. And they both told me that they were fine with this, but there was still this guilt inside me, like the monogamy mindset of how can you be doing this to these two perfectly nice people? Oh my God, they must hate you. So, oh no, they don't hate me. Okay. Um, and it's really interesting because you don't know how much you don't have examined until you really start getting down to it. Just like Lee was saying, um, these things, tend to come up over time. You know, your understanding of who you are and what you want and what your partner wants and what they need is going to change. Um, one thing that's been very helpful for me is trying to instigate regular check-ins with my partners. Um, uh, oh, crap. What, what, what's the one that they... That radar? They use? radar? Radar, yes. The radar is fabulous. You know, I could have told you that a million Can times if I didn't have radar a, is? Oh, yes. Radar is a tool that's been used by uh, several people, and I'm gonna need some help from my panelists on what exactly it all is. Um, R is, uh, I, I have this written <laughs> in a Google Doc, so I don't have to remember it, so I apologize. There will be a resources uh, PDF available at a certain point, so we will define a lot of these things for everybody. Audience, does anyone remember what radar stands for? <laughs> cool. It was worth a shot. Well. It's yeah. for the multi podcast. That's the one. Okay. Yeah, rather than know what the words mean, describe what it is. Maybe. Fabulous. Okay, so radar is basically a regular check-in, sometimes as often as a week, though I wouldn't recommend that. Usually bi-weekly to monthly or even bi-monthly is good. 
you sit down with a partner, you have a predefined amount of time set aside just to talk about your relationship. You talk about other partners, you talk about maybe household concerns, like are we doing the chores? It's basically a defined time to bring up everything in the relationship. Instead of worrying, is now the right time to talk about the issues that I have? Has this risen to the level of something that needs to be talked about? Setting time aside with your partner to say, these are the things that I have concerns about. These are things that are going really well for me that I want you to be happy for me for. And where are we? Does anything need to change? And, why, when are, and then, at the end, you set a time to do it again. You talk about maybe the topics that can come off of this radar. You talk about the things that maybe need to get talked about more in the future. And when they run long, make sure to take breaks and eat food. <laughs> All right. For anyone who is just joining us, I know it's like just after 7. Some of the schedules said this was at 6.30. Some of the schedules said this was at 7. Uh, we kind of met in the middle because it was a little weird sitting here staring at everybody for a half hour. So really, really sorry about the scheduling issue. Um, I blame Paul. Yeah. <laughs> we still love you, Paul. We should all just yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, welcome, welcome, come on in. You. The internet tells me what radar is. Yeah. yeah. One real quick. Yeah. It's review, agree the agenda, discuss, action oh, points, yeah. reconnect. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. It's from the Multi Amory podcast. Yes. Oh. <clears throat> yes. That is actually one I had never heard of, so oh, oh, thank well, you guys very much. Right. Do you mind if I grab that back right quicker? Um, That's fine, we can keep going. Okay. Why don't we, we have a lot to get through, so. Um, let's keep going. going. Just real quick, we're halfway through that 45. Yep, we gotta yes. get going. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, awesome. Good call. Just blocking. Oh, you okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna yeah. give it to me, and I was like, okay, sure. Just blocking us from seeing there. your beautiful faces. <laughs> Aww. Next one. All right. Um, the good news is, you guys are already addressing a lot of the topics I had on here naturally, so oh, sure. teamwork. Um, I think a question that a lot of people like kind of want to know about is like, are you out to other people and to what extent and how do you decide who and how and when to be out about your uh, non-traditional relationship styles? Uh, I am out to basically all my friends, but I have the I moved to California 12 years ago and basically restarted my life. And so I don't have any friends that are not at least non-monogamy aware. Um, as far as any friends I had from before, the few that I've kept since I restarted my life know everything, and uh, the ones that I didn't aren't my friends anymore, so I don't care. Uh, as far as family goes, um, some people do, some people don't. Uh, and deciding on who to tell has been one of those things I still can't really figure out. Personally. I also have a good beard because I look like I'm just a regular, you know, cishet married woman. <laughs> regular? <laughs> Ish! <laughs> I am out to all my friends. Um, I am pretty out at work. Um, more to the more because again they passed an ordinance that said that they were going to recognize polyamorous relationships, and I actually thanked the city manager and you know like sent some emails and stuff. So I do talk about it occasionally. Um, my last job I was not as that out at because I worked in public health, and it turns out we're a negative outcome. So you know, Aww. like no, I mean don't worry, it says disability. So you know that was awkward, <laughs> but like. Um, uh, you know, but I, I, I thought I had come out to my mom, but she apparently blocked it out. <laughs> so I wound up coming out to her again, and I, when I, not realizing she didn't know, and that didn't go well, and so now it's awkward, right? And I'm not necessarily out to her friends because she is so uncomfortable with it. I don't know how she would handle it, but I am out to 
my partner's families, I'm out b because they have they're okay with that. Um, and I am generally, if I meet someone in the wild, I will talk about my various partners and stuff like that. Quick request: Could we get everyone to move towards the walls? We've got a few people standing, and if we can consolidate. Yeah, there's definitely open seats if people. Yeah, want them. yeah, and there's yeah, there's some spread in the middle. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, really appreciate. Let people have also, a chance to see. Also, this turnout is great. Thank yeah, you thank you so, so much. We really are, love having all of you here. Thank you. As a former Disney employee, please take up all available stations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent. Um, the uh, uh, the other, I, I, I'm very lucky. Um, I I uh, my parents uh, basically I, I decided to tell my parents about and, and my my siblings about coming out and their responses basically I, we don't really get it but sure if you're happy cool um, uh, and to me that's support like I don't you know people define it differently I guess but um, the big the big thing for me is that like I'm I, you know I recognize I have a lot of privilege to be in that situation a lot of people have. Uh, you know, come from uh, family environments or other other social uh, groups where that's not uh, as acceptable. And I also have the privilege of living in Seattle, which is, you know, uh, uh, there was an Onion article about the great Seattle polycule. So uh, you, you can you can uh, you can you can tell how poly friendly Seattle is um, because of because of all that. Um, you know, I try to be very out and try to be very visible and be, uh, you know, sort of a voice saying, hey, this is fine, this is a normal, this is an okay thing to do, uh, uh, it's okay if you're like this or want this for yourself, uh, because I feel like if I have that privilege, I should, I should use it for, for that, so. Also pretty privileged. Um, my younger sibling actually did the hard work for me with my family. Uh, <laughs> I know. Uh, I'm like I am ten years older than you, and you already have more girlfriends than I do. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, yeah, they let my family know that they were poly, and so after that, I was like, well, if they can do it. <laughs> Uh, my family's really matured a lot from what they used to be. So uh, my family, they know. Um, I've brought several of my partners to meet them, and they have been nothing but accepting. I'm very lucky that way. For my friends, uh, I have moved a lot of times in my life. Um, I would not say all of my Facebook friends know that I'm Polly. Uh, I would say all the friends that are ongoing friends know that I am Polly, including several of the members of the military that I used to serve with. <laughs> That was probably the ones that got, it gave me the most pushback. Um, I, th I think there was, uh, but the good ones stuck around. Uh, these days, um, I kind of came to the conclusion about 15 years ago that uh, me pretending to not be a nerd and to be a really cool dude was not working for me. <laughs> and then I kept attracting people into my life that was expecting me to have to live up to those standards. Nerd. <laughs> no, no, not those standards. The, the standards of, oh, you're a competent person who can remember things. Oh. <laughs> Um, and then once I stopped doing that and just started inviting people to my bi-weekly board game night, like, I actually didn't have to try as hard with my friends. I actually attracted the people that I wanted into my life. And then about 12 years later, I figured out that the same was true for my relationships. At this point, I try my best to live authentically, even in the Midwest, which is not the friendliest place to buy people or, or polyamory, um, I feel like the people have a right to know, goddammit. <laughs> and uh, if you want to be my friend, then you should be friends with who I am. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and if you have a, a regular board game night on your polyamory bingo card, you can check that out now. <laughs> I have a partner and an ex in my current Pathfinder group. <laughs> we need two more! Achievement! Yeah! <clears throat>
turn on this. Thank you. All right. How are we doing on, on the 15 time? minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. Um, if we can all be quick. Yes, Here's another one that I think comes up a lot. Um, what do your decisions around sexual health look like? Hmm. Um, hmm. I'll just say, uh, for me, especially when I was like kind of doing the solo thing, um, I'm very, very proactive. I, st I still am um, very proactive in being like, okay, you know, here, here's when I was last tested. Here's the results. Where are yours? Um, you know, what are your practices with like the people you sleep with? Um, I find that just being as like radically and like forthcoming as possible is what works for me. And people who don't want to do that are people that I don't want to be in partnerships with. So, yeah, uh, I've personally learned that the hard way um, with some people who were less than uh, truthful. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of, I mean, I feel like, you know, anyone who's gone through like a really slutty dating period might have also had the same experience, but in this case, I let other people know the people that I'm also sleeping with, so. <laughs> um, I am open with my partners about what I'm doing with whom. I am a large fan of uh, latex-based methods of protection unless somebody has allergies, in which case we come up with other forms of protection. I get that people have allergies. Um, but one of my partners is a latex fetishist, so it's not like I had to argue real hard. <laughs> <laughs> and um, gener generally, I think I, I have, at this point, I have one partner with whom I can, with whom I don't necessarily uh, use barriers, but we also talk about what exactly that means, because it turns out that when you say please use barriers, people think of different acts with which, oh, you don't mean that one. And in fact, sometimes I don't. So like, we have to, and I have had a partner lie to me and then come back and say, not a current one, come back and say, but you weren't specific. You just told me to use, which I mean, in fairness, I just said use, you know, in that person's case, use condoms. And well, they didn't. So I don't know what they were bitching about. Yes. So like, you know, so that kind of, I try to be um, as, so now I'm, very, very specific with people. And I get tested, I would say regularly, but like my partners and their partners have not had a lot of new partners of late, so there isn't really anything new under the sun, right? Yeah, yeah no, um, my sort of my, my two, uh, you know, partners that I, I, I nest with or whatever, like they, you know, they are, they and I are sort of, uh, 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 you know, we don't use barriers with each other, and then we agree that we're always going to use barriers with anyone else, and uh, that works uh, uh, really well. We also talk to each other about, hey, there's, we had, you know, this, we got involved with this new person or what have you, and, and uh, you know, so that way we have uh, clear communication there. Um, I think that that's, you know, just... Uh, easy to important. I will say too that like uh, uh, I have definitely been surprised uh, by the number of times where like uh, a woman wanted to bring up condoms but felt already like just even like saying it like she was like bracing for a conflict and and I totally get that but that means dudes step up condoms are fine use condoms that is all <laughs> Please don't crucify me. Uh, um, I do fly a little riskier. I do get tested frequently. Um, what I mean by that, because I don't want to get the wrong impression, is when I uh, when I've got a stable relationship with people, I will not use protection. When I'm going out with someone new, I will inform them of the situation that I'm in. We'll check the papers, and then we'll have a discussion of if protection is going to be used or not. It is an agreement at that point is fully informed, and I uh, have been more than happy to use condoms if they're like, that's what makes me comfortable. I don't prefer it. Um, and it's something that uh, I haven't ever lost a partner over it because I am willing to do what makes them comfortable. Right. Um, and at the end of the day, um, if you're going to do that, please make sure you're being very careful about going and getting tested after new partners with, um, to see if you've got any STDs. It, the, most of them can be treated or managed, and then if you do have one, then 
<laughs> you got to stop acting like me. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I guess. Uh, do, you, do you make sure to go back and tell your like? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. You're free with. Hey, I've been involved with the new person. Oh yeah, thank you. Yes, um, th that was something I was not thinking about. At the end of the day, my partners all know when someone new is in my life, and when I've gotten a and if I've gotten a test since then. And oftentimes, that's just meant that there's a little bit of a break between us sexually until the test results come back, and we know that this person is in fact telling the truth. Um, one of the great things about polyam is that there are a million ways to do this. Uh, so long as you are talking honestly and openly with your partners, you're probably not going to fuck it up. I mean, you're going to fuck up plenty, right. but, <laughs> but you're going to be openly communicating about those fuck ups and hopefully learning from them. Um, one more thing, actually, that I that I thought of as you were, especially you know, like um, the way this you know can work so many ways. Uh, you know, I I am actually like a fairly like low sex drive person, um, and uh, I know some people who are like fully on like fully fully like all the way over on the asexual spectrum, but they have partners who are like higher sex drive, and it can be a really great way to like make a relationship work without, you know, feeling like you're under pressure to do things that are not comfortable for you or to do things frequently that are, you know, not comfortable for you instead of like when you really want to have sex instead of like, oh God, you know, I'm the terrible like partner who never, never gives it up. Um, so that's, it's, it's, I always, I, I really appreciate the ways in which non-monogamy allows people to just build relationships that work for them instead of like trying to slot themselves into the I, one definition. I saw a video from a, uh, 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 of a sexual poly person who's like, I love poly. I get to outsource the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> that, that made me laugh a lot. Um, all right. So, uh, the rest of our time, we would like to, uh, allow everyone to ask any questions you have and we'll do our best to 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 give some insights um you can